Today's video is sponsored by Veloy. In this video today, I'm putting together a budget film scanning setup using an older digital camera to see what kind of results you can get without spending a ton of money. I'm gonna share the specific gear that I use, the process and the results, and also going to compare a few of the images against the scans I get from my much more expensive GFX setup. And also in partnership with Veloy, we're gonna be giving away this entire camera scanning setup uh, to someone watching this video. So I'll let you know a little bit later how you can enter that giveaway. So I've been a huge fan of camera scanning ever since I got into it last year. Just the speed and the convenience is massive. And then also uh, the file quality I've been very happy with, but uh, have been very curious just to see what you could get out a much more affordable setup using like a old digital camera body and lens combo as well. So uh, obviously there's a bunch of accessories you need as well. My goal really was to come in around the like 325 pound, maybe 350 to $400 US mark total. Uh, but there are a lot of different routes you can go. You might already own a camera or an older lens. This isn't necessarily to say like, this is the best camera, this is the best lens, this is exactly what you need. Uh, more so just to show you that this can be done for obviously a lot cheaper than a GFX or even a higher megapixel uh, newer digital camera. So anyways, we'll jump into things. We're gonna start by taking a look at the gear. So first up is the camera and I chose to go with the Fujifilm X-A3. This came in at 125 pounds. So I didn't know anything about this camera, but I really didn't have any preferences coming into this other than I knew I wanted a mirrorless camera for lens adaptability. And then I just wanted to get the highest megapixel count that I could for my money. Say, you know, $150 US and under was kind of where I wanted to be. And this XA3 was released back in 2017. It has a 24 megapixel Bayer sensor. So a little bit different than the X-Trans that we're used to in a lot of the Fuji bodies. And all that I did is I went on uh, mpb.com. This is not sponsored by them or anything like that. And I just logged on to their uh, mirrorless category and then set the price from low to high. And there was this, there were some like Sony options, A5000, a couple other older bodies, all probably would work just fine. I think like anything 16 megapixels and above would be a good choice. So next up is the lens and I chose a Canon FD 55 mil F3.5 macro with the FD 25 extension tube and the lens cost 50 pounds, the extension tube nine pounds. So the cheapest new macro lens that I could find was from Seven Artisans. It was their 60 mil macro. I actually used that in my original video with the X-T4 scanning uh, and it worked fine, but it's right now I think it's like 200 pounds if you were to buy it new. Obviously way too much for what I'm trying to do here. So I went to the used market again, went vintage. I knew I wanted something from one of the bigger manufacturers. And this is a one to two macro lens. I didn't realize that until I got it and I tested it out and that's fine with this setup for medium format. But once you start to get closer to the film, when you're shooting 35, you need one to one. And that is why I grabbed this extension tube, this FD25, which turns this lens into a one to one. Uh, and I feel like I lucked out with this setup just because as you'll see, the performance from this was really nice. And of course needed to adapt this to the Fuji and I ended up with a FD to X mount adapter by a company called Earth. And this came in at 25 pounds. So next up is the actual film scanning setup just with the holder and stuff. Obviously, just like with the camera and lens, all sorts of different ways you could go with this. You could literally just tape your negative to a light pad if you wanted. But uh, what I've learned with camera scanning is just convenience and ease of use is important then. Also having something that holds your film nice and flat. For this video, I decided to use Veloy's new enthusiast kit that they sent over, coming in at roughly 150 pounds. This kit consists of a 35 millimeter film holder, 120 film holder, Veloy's new updated light adapter base, and a new light from Cinestill. They also sent over one of their starter kits, which ditches a few pieces and comes in at a cheaper price point, roughly around 70 pounds. This is a really great way to just get into it uh, at a cheap price point. Uh, this basically ditches the light adapter and the 120 holder. So you just get this light and the 35 millimeter film holder, which mounts on top. But even this, you know, the light is really nice quality and this will just get you going. And you can kind of buy these extra pieces as you go if you want to build your kit up from there. 
Okay, so the last piece of gear is the coffee stand. I ended up back with this original version that I used in my very first video, and this is the CS500. And if you watch that video, you'll know that I really wasn't a fan of this thing. Um, the base and the column are actually pretty solid, but the head and the quick release plate are made out of plastic. So there is just a bunch of play here. Even though they don't move, there's just flex. So when you're trying to like critical focus, there's these like little vibrations. So it works and the images in the end are fine. It's just a little finicky to use, but there's absolutely nothing else at this price point unless you get creative yourself and use like an old enlarger or something. Okay, so totaling everything up, that brings us to roughly 410 pounds using the enthusiast kit and 330 pounds if we were to use the starter kit. And honestly, I think that's pretty good considering it includes everything we need. Okay, so we're just gonna scan one frame of 35 mil. I've obviously scanned all the images for this test already. I just wanna give you like a quick rundown of how this works. So uh, using this enthusiast kit, this new adapter base from Veloy is now made out of steel. So it's super solid. It has these little adjustable feet. So uh, first thing you would wanna do is just make sure that your film holder and your lens are parallel using a mirror. This is great to do that because you can just adjust these little feet to make those micro adjustments and really get that perfect. And then this new light from Cinestill. So this one's really nice because uh, you can plug it into the wall via USB. I just have a little power pack here for this video. And then it has three different modes. So it has uh, cool, white, and warm. Cool is labeled for negative film, white for black and white, and then warm for slide film. So a bunch of different color temperatures and then nice brightness and nice high CRI as well. So this panel, you know, really affordable. This thing is, uh, I think, gonna be like one of the best options out there uh, for scanning film when it comes to price and performance. Anyways, we'll go ahead and we'll set this to negative. And then obviously on the camera, shooting raw, I have one stop of overexposure compensation, which is usually where I end up when I'm uh, scanning color negative film and then have electronic shutter selected so I don't have to touch uh, the camera and focus peaking on set to blue and set to high. And we'll go and we'll just focus this here. So what I always do is I open my lens right up and I'll go zoom in and I'll basically just focus back and forth and then find that sweet spot kind of in the middle where that peaking is most prominent. And you'll see the flex in this head on the back of the screen here. It's just crazy. It makes nailing critical focus a challenge. Uh, like image quality afterwards is fine because your hands aren't on here. It's just when you're working with this thing, that's when it drives me insane. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So we'll zoom back out and then I'm gonna stop down to F8. And when I first got this lens, I basically just did uh, a couple tests at some different apertures. I found F8 to be kind of like the sweet spot between sharpness and depth of field. Um, other than that though, gonna go ahead and we'll set this self timer and go ahead and shoot. That's basically it, really straightforward. Obviously with this Veloy holder where you really get the most out of it is if you had an uncut roll of film because then you could just you know, slide to the next one and you can kind of rip through an entire roll pretty quick. But uh, yeah, let's hop on the computer now and we'll go take a look at the images as my copy stand falls apart. Okay, so we're gonna start by looking at 35. This is what I was most curious about just because with what we spent on this setup, it kind of puts us in the same range as like a flatbed scanner when it comes to cost. And personally, I've always been happy with the results using medium format uh, on a flatbed, but never with 35. So I was curious if this could kind of like replace that as a do-it-all solution. And uh, size-wise, we're around the like 50, 600 pixel mark native resolution on the sensor is 6,000. So if you frame this a little bit better when you're scanning, you can squeeze a bit more out. But uh, you know, still for a 35 mil frame, that's a pretty good size. And when it comes to like color and tone on these smaller negatives, uh, like, yeah, I'm really happy with how these look. This wasn't that surprising just because any camera that I've used uh, with this process and then using Negative Lab Pro, the results are usually pretty consistent and the colors and the tones always look nice. It converts really easy. Uh, but cool to see that this older sensor, you know, five, six year old sensor uh, converted really well. And it, I wasn't having to like mess with, you know, tones and try and get things to look right. Even in images like this with really bright highlights, things look nice. So 
very happy with the look of these. But what did really catch me off guard, I gotta say, was the amount of detail this setup captured with the smaller negative. So going back to this orig original image, if we zoom into 100%, this is really, really impressive, uh, in my opinion, for a 35 millimeter scan using this lens that cost us 50 pounds. I mean, it's super sharp, tons of fine detail, corner to corner, edge to edge. Uh, it looks amazing. And when I first converted this, I was really impressed. And for fun, if we do a comparison, so on the right is the same image scan with the GFX 50R. If we go into 100%, it's almost hilarious when you consider the price difference between these two cameras, but they look almost identical. These two scans look so similar. And the X-A3 with the Canon, in my opinion, was able to capture just as much detail as this GFX. So um, yeah, kind of crazy to see that one, to be honest. Uh, moving on to medium format, so this is six by seven. Losing some resolution, we're down around the like 4,800. You could maybe get that up to 5,000 pixels, but that's still a, a pretty good file size for a lot of situations. Uh, obviously, when it comes to sharpness and detail, negative's getting bigger, so I'm just gonna build off of what we saw with the 35. And I, I think it looks great. I'd be very happy with this, this for my setup. Uh, when it comes to like color and tones, again, you know, especially considering this is a night image, I think it did a good job seeing into the shadows here. Uh, even these bright highlight areas, like it handled this well and it converted well. Um, if I were like really getting nitpicky, I would say these like really dark shadow areas start to go a little bit flat. That's something I noticed, but this is pretty minor. This is just going to come down to like how picky you are. Overall looks good though. This is 645, so we're around like 5,300 pixels, getting a little bit bigger. Still a good file size and just more of the same with this one. So super sharp, tons of detail throughout this image. Even these like really bright highlight areas on the hood, I think it handled well. They look nice. Shadows look pretty clean. And overall it's just, yeah, it's a good scan. I would be completely satisfied with these for my medium format scans. I think they look nice. And then just one last one here. This is kind of like a fun comparison, a little ridiculous, but uh, on the left we have the X-A3 and on the right we have the same image scan with the GFX 100S. Obviously a huge price difference between these two, double the resolution on the 100S. Uh, but from afar, with these zoomed out, you'll notice like the look of them is very similar. It's not that different. Uh, where I did notice a difference is Again, down in these deep shadow areas, you'll see on the XA3, they're like a little flat. GFX is a little more fine detail in there. But again, this is nitpicking at things and obviously older sensor, smaller sensor. That's probably, I would assume, where you're gonna start to notice the differences just in these really kind of subtle differences in tones. But uh, I think for the most part, like for a lot of uses, a lot of what people need out of their scans, uh, from what I saw from these results, these are files that are going to still allow you to do like a lot with when it comes to tweaking them and adjusting them and obviously printing as well. So um, yeah, surprising results, especially this 35 mil stuff. This was really cool to see and this caught me off guard for sure. You know, I think the conclusion that I come to is that you absolutely can put together a scanning setup using a cheap, older, digital camera and lens combination and still get results that are gonna be good for a lot of uses. You know, 5,500 pixel files from this camera, still gonna be great for, you know, small to medium sized prints, books, web, all sorts of stuff like that. So I think it's all just about getting clear on what you need out of a system and out of your files. But um, yeah, I'll miss this little uh, set up. Like I said at the start, we're going to be giving this uh, entire kind of package away. So if you want in on that uh, giveaway, just leave a comment below that'll enter you in. And then a week from the post date of this video, I'm going to cut that off and I'll use just a random generator to select someone from the comments and we'll send this your way. But uh, anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it maybe gives you something to think about, answer some questions. And um, other than that, just want to say thank you. And I'll see you soon with another video.